The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Asa Sinista Tebo, your manual level teacher for lower seats. Today, we're going to focus on module one, which is handicraft. Let's look at the correction of homework for the previous lesson. The, the, the homework reads, you were asked to identify the different types of sculpture found in your father's museum at Fumban. I read the question again. You were asked to identify the different types of sculpture found in your father's museum at Fumban. So we have our answers there as the freestanding sculpture. If you go to the father's museum, you will see a freestanding sculpture. You will see a low relief sculpture. You will see a high relief sculpture and an assembly sculpture. We have studied all these in lesson one. So today we are moving to lesson two which is materials and tools for sculpting. Our lesson two will be materials and tools for sculpting. Let's, this uh, lesson, we have our lesson plan under this lesson as the first lesson, uh, the first les uh, uh, lesson under this lesson plan will be objective of the lesson. We move to the second, which is prerequisites of the lesson of today and will examine a real life situation for the lesson of today followed by the lesson content or learning activity for the lesson of today we will look at application exercise for the lesson of today and homework for the lesson of today the first let's move to our objective of the lesson. The first objective I read will be make a difference between materials and tools. First objective is make a difference between materials and tools. Our second objective we have identify materials and tools for sculpting. Identify materials and tools for sculpting. Then after we we'll look at describe the characteristics of materials and tools for sculpting. The last objective we have state the uses of the materials and tools for sculpting. We will now move to the prerequisites. Prerequisites are lessons that were taught in the previous class previous lessons. So we have the first prerequisites, knowledge on the importance of sculpting. We also have the second as identification of some sculptures. Let's now examine a real life situation for the lesson. I read the real life situation. I will have to list it keenly so that you deduce the, the, the problem or give possible solutions 
for the real life situation. I read, you are the class prefect of Lower C. You were asked to produce a sculpture for open door day activity in your school. What are the materials and tools you will use to realize this project? I read again. You are the class prefect of Lower C. You were asked to produce a sculpture for open door day activity in your school. What are the materials and tools you will use to realize this object? I take it over again. You are the class prefect of lower seats. You were asked to produce a sculpture for open door day activity in your school. What are the materials and tools you will use to realize this? object. Let's look at the learning activity for the lesson. We have the first learning activity is for us to differentiate between materials and tools. Followed by materials used in sculpture. And the third is tools used in sculpture. We'll begin with the first objective, which is differentiate, give the difference between materials and tools. Give the difference between materials and tools. Let's look at the clear distinction between materials and tools in sculpture. The key difference between materials and tools for sculpture are the materials form the actual product. Materials form the actual product. They are the parts, components, ingredients, and raw materials that becomes part of the product. Let me read it. They are the parts, components, ingredients, and raw material that become part of the product. It means at the end of your processing of a wood of a, a wooden object, you should the, the material should be part of this product. Then we move to another uh, explanation for materials. For you to be able to use it to distinguish materials and tools. We have material is the basic matter from which the product is made means if you have a product, that material is the basic matter for which that product is made. Whereas, tools are the device that helps create the product. Tools are the device that helps create the product. It means we use these tools in order to create this product using materials. We will now move to materials used in sculpture. We we'll begin with the first material. And the first material we have here is stone. We can have stone characterized by gold, bronze, and diamond. We have stones with all these characteristics. You can see here this is a sculpted object made with bronze. This is a sculpted object made with stone. This has, look, if you look at it, it's a stone and an open environment made with stone. It's a sculpted object. That's the face of a human. The stone structure. Same thing we have here is a stone. You can just, the, the last thing that we have here is a stone without, that has not been carved. It's a stone that has not been carved. So when you take this stone and you use a chisel, or a gauge to carve out all what we have here. So this is the stone material used in sculpture. Let's continue with materials used in sculpture. We have another material here is the ivory and amber glass. Look at the ivory and amber glass. This ivory has been used to make this 
sculpture that we all see here. This ivory has been used to assemble this sculpture that we all see here. We have the third, which is the amber glass. This uh, material has been used to produce this jars that we have here. This is a stone material or glass. This is a glass. This is a glass that has been used to make this sculpture that we see. And even this one is a glass that has been used to make this material. We continue with materials used in sculpting. This is another material used in sculpting. We have ice and snow. We have ice and snow. This is ice. If you can look on, you see on the diagram, yeah, this is ice. The picture here is ice. As in, this is ice has been used to make out this material. We have another one that this is snow. This is snowfall. Used in making sculpted uh, uh, objects. We continue again with materials used in sculpting. This is another material. This we call it concrete and shells. These are concrete and shells. If you see this is a concrete material, this is mortar. A mortar and sand, cement that have been used to make the materials that we all see there. This concrete like this has been used to make this, this structure that we see here. This is a structure that some of us will know at the roadside. I be used in connecting water. It's a decorative structure. And even this one is also made from concrete. Now we talk about another material which is shells. These shells, these are shells. These are shells mostly from the sea. These are shells from the forest that have been used to make this beautiful structure that we see here. This beautiful diagram. That's another uh, sculpture made from shells. We still have to continue with other materials used for sculpting. If you look keenly, you look, you see that these are perishable materials. These are vegetables, fruits and vegetable materials that have been used to carve out objects. Vegetable material. These are fruits. Look at fruit. This fruit. If you look keenly, you look at this one. It's pineapple. Up here, you can have fruit like cucumber and other leafy. Uh, fruits that have been the other leafy uh, vegetable that have been used to carve out this the structure. The second one here we have a watermelon. This is a watermelon that has been used to carve a beautiful structure. If you look this structure, look at it, it's a, it's a form of a shark. You use a watermelon to carve a shark, very decorative. And the third one, kindly, it looks like an animal and it's made from cabbage. Use a cabbage plant to produce this type of sculpture. These are perishable sculptures. Let's continue with materials and tools for sculpting. We have another material here, coal, clay, and metal. We look at this first picture here, it's a clay. See this clay, it's like, it's like mud. I've been used to carve this small animal and the pot. You see another clay, it's been matched with a hand. You see a hand there, try to make a jar or a, a pot. This one is metal, uh, another stone, white stone. These are white stone that we used to carve out this structure, this statue, statue of a man. Then we move to metals. Metals are also other materials. And we realize all these materials that have been put here, they are materials that the you find the materials in the, the final product. These are the final product. This is a metal that this is an animal that has been made from metal. Even this the head of this man has been made from this metal that we see see here. This is a portrait, a portrait of a, a man made from a metal, a mat, metal materials from made materials used in making sculpture. We continue with another Material. It's another hard material. We all look at here yeah, the name. It, we call it wood. This is a wood material. Look at the pictures. A log of wood. We use a log of wood to make material. Especially the type of sculpture that we call carving. We use a wood. We carve out to carve out these structures, beautiful structures that 
is being posted on the picture here. Look at this structure here. I mean, use, you use wood to carve like a form of a human being. This one side, flower jars, and even this statue, statue of a woman being blowing a trumpet. We move to another continuation of materials used in sculpting stone and marble. These are hard rocks, hard rocks that have been carved out. See how it's been carved out to produce the head of a human. And this other one too, it has been used to carve out the, this head, like the head of a lady. This one down is the marble. Marble has been used to carve out another statue of this nature. Now, let's move to tools used in sculpture. We have the first tool. The first tool is called chisel. A chisel. Look at the picture of a chisel. It's just like a knife, but it doesn't have a glass of a knife. This one is an edge that is sharp. A chisel has a sharp edge used in cutting a or using cutting or carving a material. You can use it, use it the uh, chisel to scrape. You scrape, especially for for wood. Use this chisel to scrape the material in order to form a sculpture. You can when you, when using this tool, we use a hammer. We use a hammer to stroke the material or a mallet, and it has a chisel has several forms. We have a flat head chisel, we have the gorge tissue, we have the, flat, the, the, the tiny head a, a chisel. And now we move to the second tool, which is a gorge. A gorge is also another type of chisel, which is used in cutting bent surfaces. For example, if you want to carve the eyes or we want to carve stones, we use a chisel, a, a gorge to carve those type of curved surfaces. Or even if you want to uh, carve something, you want to carve the neck, Use a gauge to carve this. We have another material here called mallet or hammer. And or cutter. We have a mallet or hammer and a cutter. You look at the picture, we have a mallet or a hammer and a cutter. This is a mallet, this is a hammer, this is a cutter. You can look from the diagram, you know the difference. We have another tool, the saw blade. That is a saw blade, it's a long device for cut, used for cutting the material, especially wood. It's easy to use a, a, a saw blade to cut wood rather than using a knife or a cutlass. So you can have a, a better shape, especially when you use measurements. Now we move to the next tool. We have clamp and vise. All the diagrams are there. Clam and a vice, these are clam, this one and this one, and then this one is a vice. All of them they perform mostly the same function. They help to hold objects fixed on the surface during carving. For example, you want to carve an object and you cannot, it's a small object, you cannot hold it, put the object somewhere and use a, a, a chisel and hammer to be to uh, scraping the material. So you use a vice or a clam, you clip it somewhere and then so that it can be fixed somewhere so that I can do the scraping or the carving. We have another very important tool here, the workbench. At least you want to work, you will not work on the floor. We use a workbench so that you can use that workbench, you can use it to clamp or put your vice material or they can hold whatever thing you want to carve. That is a workbench. You see how big it is, it's fixed on the ground. The long plan fixed on the ground Use as a working surface. Use a workbench as a working surface to do our carving. And we have come to the end of the lessons. We have a summary here. We have a summary which is difference between materials and tool. That was under our first objective. We have come to the summary that we are realizing that we have done differences between materials and tools. We have also looked at the different materials and tools used in sculpting and their characteristics and usage. We have looked at the different materials and tools used in sculpting and their characteristics and usage. This is all what we have done during 
the lessons. So let's now look at application exercise. We're going to do some exercise to evaluate a level of understanding of this lesson. So we are going to look at some exercise to evaluate a level of understanding of this lesson. And the first exercise we have, what is the problem in the statement above? I read the question. If you listen keenly to the real life situation, you should be able to deduce the problem in the statement above. And so we have our answers here to be need to identify the appropriate tools used for each material in sculpting. You need to identify the appropriate tools used for each material in sculpting. The second exercise, which is what would determine your choice of materials and tools for sculpting? What would determine your choice of materials and tools for sculpting? And we have the answer. The first thing that will determine the method that you use. Which method that we use to, to do your, your, sculpt, your sculpting? If you come up with a method, you'll be able to know the type of materials to, to use. For example, if you want to do carving, we know that most, carving mostly goes with wood. Carving mostly goes with wood. If you want to do assemblage, assembly mostly goes with piling up of things. And we just pick things and assemble. If you want to do uh, casting, you know that we can use metals. Those are the type of materials that we use. Or oh, determine your choice. If you know the method to use, you know the type of material to use. That's type of material. So we have talked about method use. I talk about type of material. You have to relate the two. Once you know the method, you know then you come up with the types of materials. And also the environment. For example, if you want to do carving, you want to carve wooden objects like wooden spoon, chairs, wooden spoon, chairs, and you are in an environment where you don't have trees, and it's something that you have to make money from it. You not pay, you not spend much money to bring trees from a far environment. So when you are doing, you're making a choice to for sculpting, you need to know the materials and the tools. The environment. So one thing that will determine you, the, one thing that will provide you with the materials and tools is the environment. If the environment is not characterized by trees, if you have you are in a grassland area, you know that it will be difficult for you to get trees. So another one too will be the income. You will not spend more to get less. So you want to do your sculpting in an economic way so that you'll be able to have profit at the end of the process. So and one important aspect too for choice is your income. You can't start, you can't even not start a business with an empty hand, you need money. And so the amount of money too will determine the choice of materials and tools for sculpting. Let's continue with question, the questions and answers. You have exercise three, all right? Exercise three reads, name three durable materials used in sculpture. Name three durable materials used in sculpture. We have talked about materials, the perishables and non-perishables, soft materials and hard materials. So now we are asking about the durable materials. And we know the old ones are materials that can take long. So one of those durable materials is a metal. We all know metal, they are strong. We talk of stones. We also talk of wood. So these are the strong materials that are used in sculpting. Now, exercise four. We move to the next question, which is exercise four. What are the uses of the following tools? What are the uses of the following tools? One, the workbench and a chisel. And we all know the workbench is a table used to fix objects by the sculptor. And the chisel tool is a sharp edge tool used for carving. Exercise five, look at the pictures below.
carefully and answer the questions, the following questions. Look at the picture below carefully and answer the following questions. We have all these pictures. The first picture you see here, second, third, and the fourth. The question reads, name the tools used to make each of the sculpture. Name the tools. We look at the materials, we'll be able to name the tools used to make each of the sculpture. What material is needed to sculpt each of the sculpture? Question two, what material is needed to sculpt each of the sculpture? The answers are, use the vice. For the first question, you see the first question is the name the tools. We name the tool, this is a metal. First one is a metal, so we use a vice. We use a hand. We use chisel and a gorge. Those are the tools. And the second set of answers is the first uh, material there was a metal, the second material was clay, the third material was wood, and the last material was a stone. These are the metal, clay, wood, and stone. They were all used to do this sculpture that we see on the diagram. So we will now continue with homework exercise. We move to our homework exercise to update this sculpture and state which material was used to produce it. Observe this sculpture and state the materials used to produce it. In the course of this lesson, we went through this reference. So you can use this reference for further research and for better understanding of the lessons. If you look there, we use the dictionary and other uh, related topics, other research that are relating to our topics. You see hand tools, cutting, and all those things in the lessons, and even images. You see, our this is talk about google.com and slash images that we use all these lessons, these references to come out with this lesson. So, we have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on techniques of sculpting wooden objects. This is the title of our next lesson, Techniques of Sculpting Wooden Objects. Manetambia niña ne injubia yen 